ಅಂಬತ್ವಾಮಸಂದಧಾಮಿ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತೆ ಭಗವತ್ಷಿಣಿ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಉಚ ಅರ್ಜುನಾಶ್ಚಲಿಂಗ್ರೀಡ್ಫಾರ್ಕಿಂಗ್ಡಮ್ಕಿಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ಪೀಪಲ್ the fault is the biggest sin he says then what does krishna bhagwan say shri bhagavan vacha apite dasi papebhya sarve bhya papa kruttamah sarvam jnana pravenaiva rujinam santarishyase arjuna you are not doing any sin but even assuming you are doing the biggest sin what is the way out everything can be completely vanquished if you take to the boat of gnana you can cross the ocean of parpa entire papa by taking to the boat boat of gnana then how to get that you should become a student what are the qualities of a student ತದ್ವಿ ಪ್ರಣಿಪಾತೇನ ಪರಿಪ್ರಶ್ನೇನ ಸೇವಯ ಉಪದೇಕ್ಷಿ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಮಾನಿನಸ್ತತ್ವದರ್ಶಿ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಥ್ರೀ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಪ್ರಣಿಪಾತ ಪರಿಪ್ರಶ್ನ ಸೇವ ಪ್ರಣಿಪಾತ ಇಸ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ಸರೆಂಡರ್ ಓಪನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಟೋಟಲಿ ಟು ವಾಟ್ ದ ಟೀಚರ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೆಲಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ it doesn't mean that you accept everything is being told you have to question and question and then to overcome the tamas we should do seva that is the karma yoga you have to do these things then you become eligible to become a student what are the qualities of a teacher gnaninaha tattva darshinaha a person should have the knowledge and also should have experience he should have realized the truth such should be the teacher so as you are all going to be the teachers you have to not only understand you should be able to experience theory and practice both are needed then what is the knowledge that you are going to get what is the gnana by taking for which you will be able to overcome all these sins that you are thinking of na jayate mriyate va kadachit ಶಾಶ್ವತೋಯಂಪುರಾಣಿತ್ಯಮ್ಯಪುರುಷಪಾರ್ಥ ಕಂಭಾತಯತಿ ಹಂತಿ ಕಂಚಿಂದಿ ಶಸ್ತ್ರಾಣಿ ನಿತ್ಯ ಸರ್ವಗತಸ್ಥಾನೋಜ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಥಿಂಕ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದ ಬಾಡಿ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ ನಾಲೆಡ್ಜ್ ಆರ್ ರಾಂಗ್ ನಾಲೆಡ್ಜ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ನಾಲೆಡ್ಜ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಇಮ್ಮಾರ್ಟಲ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ದಟ್ ಇನ್ಫೈನೆಟ್ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ with infinite energy infinite power infinite freedom infinite bliss infinite knowledge that's what you are nobody can destroy you nobody can cut you down no fire can burn you no water can wet you that's what you are that is the knowledge that you have to understand you know 
and how to get to that knowledge for a student you know so is trigunya vishaya vedaha nistraigunyo bhavarjuna nitya nirdvandho nitya sattvastaha niryoga kshema atmavan we are all made of the three gunas tamas rajas and sattva tamas is the laziness the thought the drowsiness tipiness ignorance darkness what is rajas full of activity vitality energy brilliant sharpness intelligence but you are engrossed and enslaved by your desires greed jealousy hatred infatuation arrogance then the third quality that we all have is sattva which is full of brilliant sharpness energy vitality but doing everything for the good of the others helping others serving others doing everything good for the others so we are all have this three gunas we are all made of this three gunas and krishna says you have to go beyond the three gunas and what is that you should become nirdvandva there is no duality and nitya satvastah all the time are tuned to yourself nir yoga kshema atmavan so you have to get to this level of a great yoga master a great nani is known as a tipa pragna in whom the knowledge that i am that infinite has been stabilized what are the qualities prajnas then krishna says prajahati yada kamon sarvan partham anugatan atmane vatmana tushtah tita pragnastha dochyate yada sarvan kamon prajahati there are two qualities of such a great master called sthita pragna a realized soul an established person mm-hmm. number one his mind is always in calmness peace he has complete mastery over his mind he can stay in that silence for any length of time how long 10 minutes 15 minutes one hour two hours one day two days five days any length of time Ramana Maharshi, the great master, he stayed for months together in the state. That is the freedom one should get. That is the first quality. What about us? You cannot sit quiet even for two minutes. If you tell your mind, come on, stay, it doesn't. So, we have to do the practice, practice, practice. By doing that, you get to that state. And the second thing is full of ananda. Atmaneva atmana tushtaha. is full of happiness all the time blissful awareness is in the ananda maya kosha and that is the second dimension these are the two qualities that the chitta pragna get to that you know but very difficult arjuna says to cut my mind it is running right like a monkey you are telling that stay in silence how is it possible you know so krishna is also say next level you work on that to deal with your emotions what is the difference between thinking and emotions has been brought out the secret has been brought out by this beautiful verse dhyayato vishayan punsah sangaste shupajayate sangat sanjayate kamah kamat krodho bhijayate kro सिचुएशन on repeating it again 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 then an attachment develops that is the beginning of emotions so emotions are powered up thoughts that come because of repeated thinking this is the principle used in advertisement in tv and other places what you do you get the same thing repeated five times 10 times 100 times then you get attached to that from the attachment comes your desire i want this 
I don't want this. Raga and Dvesha come up. And from there, your greed, jealousy, hatred, impatience, and all start coming up. You become engrossed with various emotions and they enslave on you. And once it happens, your mind is clogged up. And your discrimination power to understand what is right, what is wrong goes away. And you do wrong things. So this is the whole process that occurs. Therefore, Krishna says, Arjuna, if you cannot deal with the mind directly, to silence the mind, start working with their emotions. What is to be done? Ragadvesha viyuktaistu vishayan indriyaischaran atma vashair vidhyayatma prasadam adhigachyate to overcome raga and dvesha. Everywhere, that greed, jealousy, hatred, infatuation, which are all there, you start reducing, reducing, reducing. On trivial things, you become very angry. Stop becoming angry. And greed, I want this more and more, more and more, more and more. Stop. Greed, jealousy, hatred, everything you should go on reducing, reducing. You come to a stage where your raga and dvesha, attractions and repulsions will reduce. When it the mind goes into a wonderful state of ananda, prasadam madhigachati. That beautifully ananda starts coming up with you, full of ananda you live. Then what is your state? Dukhe shonadvigna manaha, sukhe shovigatas prohaha, vita raga bhaya prodaha, sitadhir munir ujjate. Then you are rid of this dukkha and the sukha. That is happiness and miseries in which you are topped up and down, up and down continuously. That starts reducing. You start all the time being in that state of happiness and you are not disturbed. You are in equanimity. That imbalances which are created because of this raga and dvesha and all the emotions start reducing and you maintain equanimity. Yoga is equanimity. Samatham yoga vichyate. Then what happens? Vita raga bhaya krodha. All these emotions, anger, greed, jealousy, hatred, infatuation, arrogance, ego, all these things are going to come down, reduce, 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 and you are rid of that. You are no more a slave to this emotion. You have your discrimination power comes. Such is the state of a sthita pragna. A person who has realized, who has established in the state of ananda. You know? So when such ananda comes, what happens? Prasade sarva dukkhanam hani rasyo pajayate prasanna cheta sokhyasho buddhi paryavatishthate When the mind is at the ananda sthiti, in the state of bliss, in the state of happiness, wonderful happiness, what happens? All your miseries will go away. All your dukkha will go away. All stresses, tensions, everything will vanish. All your ailments will go away. And the mind gets established in that wonderful state of ananda. And that is how a sita pragna lives all the time. If you're doing all activities you may be doing, but is all the time in that wonderful state of the bliss. So with the emergence of this bliss inside, all miseries vanish and the intellect gets established in peace. <coughs> what are the qualities of such a person? Yasarvatrana <coughs> Then he is established in the wonderful state of universal love, universal brotherhood. This is Swami Vivekananda heralded in the Parliament of Religions in Chicago in his famous speech on September 11, 1893. He said, We are all gathered here in the name of religion. We are waging wars. And look at how many rivers of blood we have grown, how many millions of heads we have rolled down. Let us stop this. Let us all work together as one big family and let us have universal brotherhood. 
and that the great prasad he gave. <coughs> when does that happen? When the mind is at ananda sthiti. And the mind goes into that silence, and that calmness, and that peace, and that tranquility. And the mind is established. You are rid of this anger, greed, jealousy, everything. Then there is universal love. You start loving everybody. And that is the great state of universal love that the sthita prajna reaches. Realize soul has happened. From there, he goes into the higher layers of subtle mind. What are they? These are the most difficult shlokas to understand. Yanisha sarva bhutanam tasyam jagarti sayyami yasyam jagrati bhutani tanisha pasyato mune. He says that this Sita Pragna is staying as a day in the night. And for him, it is night during day for others. When it is day for all of us, the Sita Pragna finds it's a night. When it is night for all of us, he stays awake. What does that mean? No. How can you have the day in the night and night in the day? No. So this is the secret that he gives. What is night for us? That is, mind is not working in the night. For him, it is at that time working. What is day for us? Mind is working during the day. What is for him? In that silence. So he has a dual mode operation. Inner layer of the mind, subtler layer of the mind, all the time, that wonderful silence, calmness, peace, bliss inside. Outside he is doing the activity. Yoga sthakkuru karmani sangantyakto dhananjaya As I said, attuned to that self, it has all activities. No? That's what is going to happen. So, all the time the inner layer of the mind, subtler layer of the mind is always in that silence. No? And outside, he will be doing any activity. Sitting, chanting, eating, eating, drinking, urinating, excreting, anything you are doing. Then every action will become a yoga. Karma becomes a karma yoga. The secret of action is this: attune to self, do action. You know. So when you are doing asana, pranayama, mudras, pandhas, kriyas, your mind should be always in that silence. You do all this activity to take the mind to that silence. And the stage will come when your mind is completely in that blissful awareness and doing all your activities. This is the wonderful state that it says. And then, this state of silence is not a single state. There are again our trigunas are embedded in this inner silence. That is tamas rada sattva. So, you have to understand that in the so-called silence, there is still our gunas are manifesting, which have to be cleansed. Chakashayam vijaniyat. Samaprapthana Chalaya says, there is the things that are there inside, in the deep layers, it is all set there. For example, we have deep sleep. Does that mean your become, mind has become zero, mind has become silent? No. Mind is operating. So this is what it says. How do you know that it's operating? Today we have technology. We have got polysomnograph, a sleep lab. If you go to our sleep lab here, you put our into sleep, then we track what is happening in your brain. When you are in the deep sleep, it's called non-REM sleep. Dream means REM sleep. REM, rapid eye movement sleep is called dream sleep. When you are dreaming, your eyes will be moving like this. You put an oculogram, you can see the things coming up like this. That's in the dream. But in deep sleep, when you don't have dreams, then you are calm, quiet, but there also your brain is working. You are in different states, which have been mentioned. The deepest state of sleep is called the delta wave sleep. That's the thing. If you sleep for eight hours, probably for half an hour, one hour only, you will be in the deep sleep of the delta sleep. Because that's the phase when you get maximum happiness, bliss and silence and relaxation you will get. Other phases you don't get. Therefore, you have to go to that phase. That's important. So, 
this is how you realize it. So in that state of silence, there are again activities going on. All those activities should be silent. And that is the thing that Krishna is telling, I wish. So this can happen when you erase the Prarabdha and Sanchita Karmas. So in that state of non-action, if you say mind is silent, state of silence, it is not a single state. There are a lot of our samskaras, karmas, which are all embedded in the form of tamas, rajas, sattva again. You know? And this stage is called avyakta. Avyakta is called unmanifest state. You know? And you see many, many states of this avyakta. For example, a person gets a head injury, gets a big accident, he goes into coma. Mind is not working. Hmm? Hibernation. The serpents eat very well and will go into hibernation. Three months, four months during winter, they are completely almost like dead. During surgery, a surgeon will take you to the state of unconsciousness by giving you anesthesia. You know, mind is not working. So they do the operation, they cut open your heart and other things, but still you are not aware of that. You know, that is the state of unconsciousness. Or a person may have epilepsy, you know, pet it more, grind more, and they may go into this unconsciousness, epileptic unconsciousness. Or a person drunk, he gets drunk, gets into a state of unconsciousness. In all these things, you see that the mind is not working. Mind is in an unmanifest form. That's called abhyakta. But don't think this is the state of highest level. Then you come to deep sleep with no dreams. Then you have various types of samadhi, jada samadhi, gross superconscious state. Then hypnotic trance, then drug induced silence. They are all avyakta phase. So you have to understand they are not the ultimate. Then you go into the samadhi, superconscious state. Patanjali talks about eight types of samadhi. Samadhi is the end of the Ashtanga Yoga. Yama, Nema, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi. Many people think Samadhi is the end. No. But then he describes the whole set of different things in the third chapter, Vibhuti Pada and then finally Kaivala Pada. Vitarka, Vichara, Ananda, Asmita, Anugama, Sampragnataha, Tadanyaha, Asampragnataha. Like that, eight types of Samadhi he talks about. What characterizes that this? You go into deeper and deeper and deeper silence. You know? So you erase Tamas Raja Sattva which are embedded in that. You know? Then you are cleansing all those karmas which are hidden there. You know? Our mind in that state is full of this thing. So in the Karma Siddhanta, we understand how these imprints are done. So it is called Sanchita Karma, Prarabdha Karma and Agami Karma. Sanchita Karma is the storehouse of all your memories. For all the lives, whatever we have done, it's all stored in your memory. And that's called Sanchita Karma. Out of this, when we are born, we are born with some portion of that called Prarabdha Karma. And then when we do some actions, it brings some Agami Karma. When you do good actions, you have good imprint. If you do bad actions, you have bad karma. So, action and reactions are equal and opposite. This is the Newton law. So, depending on what actions you do, similar imprints will be embedded in your Manumaya Kosha, in your mind, in the deeper layer of the mind. So, this is how we store all our memories. It's called Smriti by Patanjali. So therefore, to care. First, when you are born, you are born with a tendency. So much of tamas, so much of prajas, so much of sattva, we are all born with. Then depending on the atmosphere in which you live and with the persons whom we interact, there is an influence. Imagine that if you have an asthma tendency, you are living in a very dirty place and people are all quarreling, quarreling, husband, wife, 
parents are quarreling, other people are quarreling. Your asthma gets aggravated very fast. On the other hand, you live in a very clean place and people who are living, very affectionate, asthma doesn't manifest, manifest for a very, very long time. So atmosphere in which you live is also very important. But both these things you cannot change. You know? But what is there? The third is called our freedom. We have the freedom to change. You can do this way or we can do this way. You can go like this or you can go like this. Depends on where you want to. This is the freedom that we have. This is called divinity in man. So it is this freedom that brings about the changes. You can go in the right way, you can go in the wrong way also. <clears throat> so these are three factors which makes your action in a particular way. Understand how we are doing the action? Based on our hereditary tendencies or the power of the karma, depends on the atmosphere and depends on the freedom that you use. So asthma person says, okay, I am going to do yoga practices. I do nice breathing practices, pranayama. We have developed nice yoga practices. If you do that, you will be, asthma will reduce, asthma will reduce, can even vanish. So the action that comes out is a combination of these three forces. And that forms the past action. The action becomes past action and gets embedded again in the mind. <clears throat> as a Sanchita Karma. When you are born, again you are born with the power of the Karma. <clears throat> so Kriti or the memory store is called as Karma. <clears throat> Sanchita Karma refers to the sum total of an individual. All past actions that he has stored in the memory and their consequences accumulated over countless lifetimes. Prar of the karma represents that portion of the Sanchita karma that manifests in the current life when we are born. So Sanchita karma encompasses all actions. They have yet to bear fruit. It's akin to a reservoir of deeds waiting to unfold, shaping the course of future incarnation. You have a big bank account from your parents, probably you have inherited, you know, five crores of rupees. It is all stowing there. But what you take out, you know, is the prarabdha of the karma. So, understanding Sanjita karma underscores the cyclical nature of existence and emphasizes personal responsibility and the law of cause and effect. So that is the smriti. Prar of the karma specifically influences the events and circumstances unfolding in one's current life. In the context of a horoscope, the positions of celestial bodies at the time of birth are believed to reflect this karmic blueprint, influencing individual experiences and distinct. If you want to know what is your Prar of the karma, how it is working, our Jyotisha astrology can tell you. You must know your date of birth, place of birth and time of birth. If you know, then you can put the complete horoscope. We know where your nine planets are all staying, which are making their own influence. During a particular time period, a particular Namgraha can be more influential. So you take the influence of all these things in the whole encounter. Therefore, there's a wonderful diagnostic way by which you can know about your problem the karma that comes up. So thus, the alignment of the power of the karma with astrological configuration suggests a nuanced interplay between cosmic forces and personal action, shaping the trajectory of the life's journey as interpreted through the lens of astrology. This is the dimension that comes up. Therefore, this is the research that we have taken up here and we are doing this medical astrology dimension. Then we come to last time, the Sakshi, the witness and the higher laws of creation. A meditator you know, wanted to grow very high. What did he do? Look at that. He brought a ladder to the meditation retreat. Why? He thought he can use the ladder to go. Because he wanted to elevate their mind to new heights. Sakshi, the witness. Witness is not a single state again. Sakshi with lesser and lesser focus and more and more defocusing, expansion, irrigation. Focus and defocus. 
are the two ways by which we have to grow higher we have seen last time so by doing that you are be able to expand from your annamaya kosha to pranamaya manomaya vignana anandamaya kosha there is an expansion process that take place in the four encounter that the dimension that comes up so the chitta pragna will start growing to greater and greater heights and his bliss freedom will all start increasing and in that state of expanded awareness he focuses and he is able to create things a focusing down again a gunatita person will start getting to this level less and less of distortion so he understands the loss and he is able to do the loss that is creation sustenance and destruction and the person go to the this height they are able to create things we all have this power for creation for example when you go into a dream state you are creating your own world that world is very real to you you know only when you come out of the dream you say oh it was a dream but in the dream you are enjoying sometimes your dreams are very enjoyable sometimes dreams are very fearful depends on that but who has created you have created each one of us create our own world this shows how the mind has the power to create you know when you come out of it the whole thing will go away the entire world is destroyed during the currency of the dream it is all sustained this is the trifold law of the whole creation creation sustenance and destruction the trifold law you start understanding so the dream world our normal mind has created the dream world but this external world this is created by the cosmic mind mind of brahma and we can all raise to that level when you go deeper and deeper and deeper into the dimensions of this thing so when you go to the higher levels annamaya pranamaya manomaya vignanamaya kosha you start get this powers of creation and then you start getting various powers these powers depending on where you stand they are there there are ashta siddhis eight supernatural powers will start coming up at the mental level it's called prapti and prakamya at the intellectual level it's called vashitva at the physical level lakhima garima mahama adima becoming small becoming very big and flying with higher speed lakhima nana ishitva all these things start coming up that is called the ashta siddhis eight siddhis patali talks about you know prapti prakamya vashitva lakhima garima mahima adima ishitva these are all the powers that you start getting up when you do this thing so chitta pragna in the higher levels you know is able to completely get to these powers creation you know he is a master a master of the mind in always silence even in action he doing that dimension now he has come to the end of his thing today's topic is how does the chitta pragna body how do we all leave the body how does the chitta pragna leave the body Om Ittyekaksharam Brahma Repeat Om Ittyekaksharam Brahma Yomaramma Manasmaram Brahma Yaprayatitya Jandeham Yaprayatitya Paramangatim What he doing? Om iti ekaksharam, maam anusmaram, vyaharam, brahma. The Sita Pragna in the highest level was got to that level. What he is doing all the time is immerse in the Pongkara. Om, 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 continues his mind. is a tune full of this omkara dhyana he is staying in the state of om he is repeating in the mind his mind is only absorbed in the tone continuously vyaharan anusmaran he goes on remembering remembering nice the dimension you know so in that state he leaves the body when he leaves the body in continual awareness then he reaches the highest level he reaches 
the kaivalya he reaches pure consciousness he reaches our original state paramam gatim yati he reaches dimension you know so in the gnana yoga therefore we have started like this thing started with shavana manana nididhyasana gnana from gnana you come to the sthita pragna and then highest stage is advanced gnana yoga and finally how does it yeah? all the time immersed in the tomb he leaves the body you know? and that he reaches the highest stage that is called videha mukti you know? and in videha mukti he reaches the state what is the state infinite freedom infinite bliss infinite knowledge infinite power that is absolute silence rid of all the trigunas you have gone to gunati the sthiti i mentioned okay. so two predominant ways in which such great knowledge is through the body number one with total modesty what they do while chanting om in the mind being in tune with the reality all the time in tune with the reality so they just leave the body you know, and the body is left there and you go into the pranamaya kosha the subtle body manomaya kosha vijnanamaya kosha and then go to the causal body anandamaya kosha and from there they go to ultimate reality beyond the kosha this is one way by which people do that so we have examples many examples so we were karanda he knew that yes today i am going to leave the body you know because his guru has told when your work is over then i will allow you to go into that complete ts level and you will be able to merge with that mm-hmm. he said now i have done my duty i completed all the work which i wanted to do and it will take maybe another 200 300 years to bring this type of knowledge base to everybody so my work is over i am going to leave the body what did he do he called all his you know, friends devotees everybody in that thing in belur in belur mart that day he served all people he cooked himself the food for them and served every day everybody with his own hand everybody said what is happening so many we are there to serve you but you are serving us yes today is my last day so i'm going to serve all of you so he served everybody then goes into his chambers in his room and sits in deep meditation and leaves the body and leaving the body he goes into pranamaya kosha manomaya kosha vijnanamaya kosha anandamaya kosha and merges with the ultimate his body is left so they have complete mastery over the thing or the mind this is one way we had another great saint and he is known as brahma chaitanya from maharashtra very very great personality he is called gondavali maharaj he come from gondavar area so i remember he had a very big program normally for his program 10000 20000 people used to come and wonderful bhajans and beautiful things he will tell about the entire knowledge base in today so he had come to know that yes now the time has come that i have to leave the body so that day what happened after the completion of a 10 days program where 10 15000 people had come then he said that today i am going to serve like seven number of people he went round no all people sitting there and he started serving everybody everybody said no swamiji no swamiji you should not do that we are devotees we want to serve you that no that you have been doing all this and today is the last day so they had to serve all of you and happily then he sat and mr devata he went on doing that own car own own because and he left the body and the body was left No. this is how great masters leave the body no. what about us no. we are terrified oh we are dying we are dying we are dying and we become unconscious and we die whereas masters with a happy smile they just allow the prana to come out of the shiras and then go into the higher level 
This is one way by which people leave the body. The second, <clears throat> in this, people are sitting there, they do meditation and they diffuse this body to the Pranamaya Kosha. The Annamaya Kosha becomes Pranamaya Kosha. That means you are seeing there and body vanishes. From Pranamaya Kosha it becomes Manamaya Kosha, Vignanamaya Kosha, Anandamaya Kosha and becomes one with the ultimate. So you will be wondering where the body went. You know? Example is Shankaracharya, you know? great master of masters, Nana Yogi of the highest order. Shankaracharya, he was sitting there and he enters into a gupa, a cave, and his body just vanishes. Nobody sees what happened to the body. He had the capacity to completely convert the gross body into subtle body. And the subtle body to the causal body and reach the higher. So this is another way of doing that. We had another thing, Raghavendra Mahaswamagal. He was also a great master. And he was able to also sit there and tell, please don't disturb me. And I am sitting here in meditation. It's the last day I'm going to leave this body. <laughs> Another great saint from Tamil Nadu. Yes, that is the Ramalinga. Ramalinga was Swamiji was able to even convert his, this gross body to subtle body even when she was alive. One day, in his chambers, in your room, and get into that state. <laughs> he never allowed anybody to see what is happening. He said, No, you should not come and disturb me. You don't have to see. So, here we're doing that thing. But some of, some of the naughty children are always there, no? Naughty devotees. They wanted to speak with what he is doing, we want to see. So, more they scream through the window and they started seeing. What they found, there was no body. They were sitting there. And where he was outside, you know, his body was in the subtle body. So, people wanted to take photograph. When they took the photograph, they got all the photo of the clothes and never the body. It becomes transparent. This is the phase of Pranamaya Kosha. So, the people will convert their gross body to the subtle body. And the subtle body will vanish. So, there is no need for taking them into the of the process. They just vanish. These are the two modes by which the people leave the body. Both have the capacity. One is the easier way. Just come out of the body through the shell, the shell of, you know, and leave the body. And the body will be left and the body will be cremated. In the other thing, they will just diffuse the body. The body itself, Anamaya Kosha itself, just vanishes and becomes one with the ultimate. How does this happen? Om, Om, Om. He goes on all the time absorbing himself into this thing. And they have been able to overcome all the negativities. All the things they have been able to transcend. Every the north, the city. And all the time in that silence, they have done so much of them. They have been able to cleanse themselves. And they have been able to when all the Sanjit Karma and Prada Karma, everything they have been able to completely vanquish. When they are without any of these bondages, there is the highest level. At that time, they will get all the powers. And even those powers they are going to relinquish and reach the highest. So, Patanali, in the last phase, he says, you know, they have to leave all those powers, highest power. Freedom, bliss, knowledge, everything they have to relinquish and become one with ultimate. That's called Kaivalya. So when they leave the body, they go into the Kaivalya. But what about all of us? We still have our samskaras. So when we leave the body, the Anamaya Kosha is left there. And then you go there to the next level and you are in the Manamaya Kosha, Vignanamaya Kosha, Anandamaya Kosha. 
If these courts also are there, and all your Sanjata Karma will be operating there, and after some time, you are going to take another birth. And when you come back with the next birth, you have the product of the karma that is coming up in the next birth. And you have the freedom to change. You can erase your product of the karma or you can amplify that. So then this goes again. This process of cycle of birth and death, birth and death goes on and on all of us. We all have hundreds of lives. You know? have crossed and we have come to this particular stage in which we are there now today. So this cycle goes on. And when your sadhana comes to such a thing, you overcome all the tribunas and reach the highest thing, you become the Sita Pragna, you reach the highest level, then you don't come back. This is the biggest and the subtlest bondage that we all have. That is taking birth again, birth again, dying, again taking birth. This cycle of birth and death, birth and death, we all undergo. This is the biggest bondage. And a Sita Pragna, a person who has the highest level, you know, he overcomes this bondage of cycle of birth and death. He becomes one with the ultimate. That's the implication that this shloka says. You know. Therefore, the shloka, once again we chant. Om Itye Kaksharam Brahma <laughs> Yaharam Mamanasmaram Yaprayatityadam Deham Sayati Paramangatim Paramangatim is Supreme Goal. What is the Supreme Goal? Pure Consciousness. That state is called Moksha. That is absolute freedom. Freedom from what? Freedom from all our tensions, stresses, bondages, from your dukkha, everything. What are the bondages we have? The bondage of the mind. The mind goes on thinking all the time. You tell the mind, remain quiet, it won't hear you. Bondage of the emotions, you are tossed up and down in all good and bad emotions. Anger, greed, jealousy, hatred, infatuation, arrogance, everything go on, on and on and on going on. One age of the emotion. Then one age of the intellect. We have very small knowledge, very small knowledge we have. And we continue. This is the ignorance. And we have the wrong knowledge, perverted knowledge, distorted knowledge, small knowledge. This everything is the biggest bondage. Then one day of the entire body, this body has to be fed, you have to give the drinks and it is to be fed and taken care of. And the body is governed by gravitational forces. You want to levitate, you can't do that. Similarly, we have a particular shape, you can slightly increase or decrease. You know, it can become more obese or it can become more thin. But can you make this body very huge, like a mountain, like Hanuman did? Can you make this body very small like an ant? It's called anima mahima. We can't do that body. And can you fly? Can you go out? Can you move with the higher speed? Anuman, when you have to bring the special drug to N11 Lakshmana, you have to go to Himalaya from Lanka. You have to go to Himalaya and bring that to Sanjeevini. So he goes there. And he cannot recognize which is that particular drug which he needed. Prasad you know, So what he does, he took that entire mountain itself. He plucks this thing, entire mountain he brings here. You know, is it only legend? It's only a concoction? Is it only a thing, story? It actually has happened. History. Similarly, Agastya Mahamuni. You know, he had such powers, he was able to drink the whole ocean, empty it. Is that ever possible? These are all the powers of the highest level. The creator Brahma creates the whole world. Shiva completely destroys the whole world. That is the highest stage in the Vignana Anandamaya Kosha. So when we read that Anandamaya Kosha, you get that power. The Vishwamitra, he said, I am going to create 
a heaven for you, Trishanku. Don't worry. If Indra doesn't allow you to go there, I will make you another heaven. He creates a new heaven itself. This is the power. It's called creation power. Power of creation starts coming up. So these are all the bondages that we have. You overcome this bondage. Bondage of the mind, bondage of the emotion, bondage of the intellect, bondage of the body. And reach the highest level. And that is called moksha. So, paramam gatim sahayati. He is going to reach that highest state of moksha. Absolute freedom. Freedom from all tensions, stresses, dukkhas, diseases and bondages that we have. And when does he do? Yaha prayati tyajan deham. Deham tyaja. When he leaves this body, he reaches that highest level. What is happening to his mind at that time? All the time in tune with that ultimate reality. Pure consciousness. Mind is in that absolute silence. And he leaves that body in the silence and he is awake. He doesn't become unconscious. All of us become unconscious when we die. Because of the fear. I'm dying, I'm dying. We all become afraid and when we leave the body. But here there is no fear. Abhayat wrong. He has reached the state of absolute fearlessness and he leaves the body in nice state. Just like every day we go to sleep, every day we get up in the sleep. We are not afraid. No? When you go to sleep, similarly he just goes ultimately to the dimension. So this is the grand state which the yoga can take you to the higher thing. So while we are alive, you are very happy full of knowledge, power, freedom, all these things are coming up. But when you die, you overcome the bondage of the cycle of birth and death. That is the highest achievement of the things. With that, we close today's session. Thank you all for this dimension today. And we'll take this for the tomorrow. Any questions that you may have, we are going to have the question answer. This one is close. Now, yeah, Guruji, you can interact through these only. Questions are here. You see the chat box. Many people may have questions. We see. Is there discomfort in death? Like there is utter discomfort when he is sliding into an unconscious state. Normally people go to sleep, effortlessly. And similarly, for these people, when they leave the body, there is no discomfort. There is actually ananda. Here, when we go to sleep, Suddenly there is a jump. No? You are lying down and then suddenly you lose your awareness. You become unconscious. Whereas in this state, he is fully awake. He fully knows, now I am leaving my body. The prana is coming out. Prana is coming out and then it is moving through this thing. Now I am in a higher state. From there he will go to the higher and higher level. Completely. So full of awareness and full of joy and bliss, with full consciousness, he is able to leave the body. Whereas, we do not know how we are going to sleep. From our Jagrat consciousness, we get into the sleep consciousness, sleep unconscious. Suddenly, we become unconscious. Suppose you get an accident, what happens? You become unconscious. You lose your consciousness. When surgeons want to do surgery, what they do? They will give you anesthesia and you become unconscious. Whereas here, it's different. You leave the body with wonderful, blissful awareness. You know that you are now coming out of the body. Just like we all are aware when you want to move from here outside, you go with awareness and you go around. Similarly, you leave the body also equally is fine. Supposing you are acting in a drama, you are acting, 
as a particular actress thing. In a Mahabharata, you are acting like a Duryodhana. And you know that you are not Duryodhana. When you come out of that, you become yourself. Even when you are there also, you know that you are not Duryodhana. You are Sham. Your name is Sham. You know that you are Sham. That is the state that comes up. Therefore, when you leave the body, means when you come out of the drama, then you become Sham. Whereas when you are there, you are dressed like Duryodhana, acting like Duryodhana, and everybody enjoys your action like a Duryodhana, how nicely you are acting, everybody can do. But when you come out of that, you are shown back. So that's our Swarupa, that's our Varijana state. From that Varijana state, we all have come here and we have acted like this. Thing. So therefore, there is no discomfort at the time of death and we have this wonderful state that comes up. Others are there, I will just see. We have some problem with your headset. Okay. Do we amplify the consequence of karma depending on our state of mind? Is that correct? Do we amplify the consequence of karma? Yes. <clears throat> When we do a particular karma action with attachment, then it creates an opposite reaction. You do a good action. So it will bring you a good imprint within the thing when you are attached. But if you are not attached to the action, you do it as a duty, you know, unattached you do the action, then the consequence will not be felt. For example, a person who kills another person, he murders, you know, then a big imprint of murderous sinful act is going to come. Whereas a person, a jailer, you know, he takes the person who has to be hung. The judge has pronounced as tomorrow there is capital punishment, he should be hung. He takes him and puts him into the gallows. And it's a duty. He is doing it unattached. Therefore, there is no reaction that takes place. Though he has killed, killing is same. But in this, there is no attachment. There's complete detachment. He is doing it as a duty. Therefore, he is rewarded. Whereas a person who kills, he has capital punishment. Therefore, when you do an action with detachment, with the gnanasthiti, then it will not accrue any further imprints, any further samskaras, any further you know, karma is going to happen. It is not going to add to your sanchita karma. Mm -hmm. So that is what happens there. Therefore, when you are doing the actions, we must learn how to do the actions unattached. When you have detachment, you must stop doing action. You should not. You should do the action unattached. That's what is the key essence of karma. Karma ne vadhikaraste, mo parichu padachana. This is the gnana sthiti. You do the things in the gnana sthiti, that's the one that comes out. Then the fire of gnana burns all the karmas and samskaras. But does it also burn the sanchita karma? Yes. The gnana burns. Nana burns all the Sanjita karma. Nana is at the intellectual level, understanding level, deeper level. Understanding that I am not just his body, I am the pure consciousness. And that will continuously burn all our Sanjita karmas that goes away. But then when we are born, already Prarabdha karma has come up. In the Prarabdha karma, it has already crystallized itself into the physical form. So we are born with the hereditary tendency and we have got all these gunas have come here. Therefore, it is not just only the gnana that the intellectual understanding, but you have to also have the experience, theory and practice. For example, you know that what is asana? You know everything about asana, but you don't know any asana. Will you get the result? 
Some result you will get by knowing this thing. You can be a teacher and say that this is so, but people will understand you have not done any asana. So you will not get the desired result. Similarly, here, Gnana alone will not burn up the whole of the Prarabdha Karma. You have to work at all the levels, Sannamaya, Pranamaya, Manamaya, Vidnanamaya, Kosha. And that's what we do in integrated approach of yoga therapy. When we do yoga therapy, we should not be only doing at the Anamaya Kosha only. That's what the medicines do. Medicines and surgery will do only at the body level. The root cause is not removed. Whereas in our integrated approach of yoga therapy, we do we work at the body level, work at the prana level, mind level, emotional, intellectual level. It is the integrated approach we do. Then the product karma also will go. No, no. Then the, the he is the understanding and application of knowledge. Yes. No, no. He is the knowledge and its actualization through the other dimensions will come. What is the fire of Nona? The fire of Nona is the aspect of the energy involved in that thing. Nagaratna is telling Shavana, Manana, Nidhi, Dhyasana, and Gnana. Only when we get established in absolute knowledge. Is there a discomfort in death? That's what I told already. Is it true that Prana leaves through any one of the ten gates of the body depending on our karmas. Yes. It depends on our gunas. Depending on which guna is predominant, the prana leaves from different things. It can go down through the inner, it can go through the nobi, it can go through the heart, from different places it will do. In the Sita Pragna, it goes through the higher sastrara. That's what it is told. Is incarnation scientifically established? Scientifically, the parapsychologists and people still do not accept that rebirth is scientifically valid. Though there is a large amount of literature that has been collected, about which I had told earlier, you know, still it has not been accepted in the scientific community as an established fact of evidence. He is really required to see the horoscope in my life. What benefit we will get by seeing this? If you see the horoscope, probably you know how your life is proceeding. Supposing you have the diabetic tendency. You are not shown any diabetes. No. But the horoscope can tell you probably at the age of 45, you are likely to get diabetes. What is the probability of finding a diabetes at that age, maybe about 40%, maybe 80%, maybe 90%. So it tells you the tendency. By knowing your horoscope, knowing the astrology, probably you'll be able to find out how your life is moving towards. Whether you're going to become rich or whether you're going to become poor, whether business is going to collapse, whether business is going to develop, all that can be predicted by the astrology. That's called the Jyotisha. And that's why people want to take up to astrology. But one you have to understand that it is not a deterministic approach. It's a probabilistic approach. It only tells you the probability of becoming diabetic is 40%, 60%, 90%. It will not say that at this age you are born to get diabetes. 100%. It can tell you 90, 95% is going to get. Percentage you can do. Based on that, you have to remedy them. How to differentiate astrology as science versus just random guess? So that's where now a lot of research has to be done to establish the scientific dimension. Our ancient masters were able to show that. They were able to completely understand the whole thing and they have done. But it has not been established in the modern scientific level. We have to do that scientific level. Similarly, yoga earlier was only in the books and people had not done any research. Over the last 45 years, we have done research and published nearly 40, 45 research papers. Thousand research papers we have done for the 40 years to show and therefore yoga has started becoming scientifically valid. 
evidence base has started coming up. Similar thing we have to do for astrology also. That is the project that we have for Aham Hira, Advanced Center of Vedic Technology Research. Thank you all. If people also have some questions, then you can send and next time before we start, I can take up these questions. Once again, thank you all very much. And we'll close with Shanti Mantra. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Mahaschit Dukkha Bhavet Om Shanti 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 Thank you all. Very good. See you next Saturday. Namaste, Guruji. Thank you, Guruji. Namaste, Guruji. Namaste. Thank you.